There are some big changes that are coming to Ethereum now that EIP-1559 has been confirmed. Now, if you're not deep into the weeds of crypto, and I'm talking about the technical aspects of cryptocurrencies and not just holding them until they moon, uh, this might sound like gibberish, but I'll try to explain it in the best way that I can. So cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum, they charge a fee in order for you to make your transactions. It's sort of like the fee that gets applied to running a credit card, except that it applies to anybody who is doing anything on these networks and not not just the merchants. Now, the fees with cryptocurrencies are not fixed. They are determined by the miners of that crypto. Well, really, they're determined by how large your transactions are, how many bytes are gonna be in your transaction, um, but the cost per byte, that is determined by the miners based on how congested the network is. Uh, if a lot of people are sending transactions all at once, it's going to be harder for the miners to verify all of them. So the transaction fees are going to naturally rise because people are going to start paying more and more money to jump ahead in line of that transaction queue. And of course, miners, they typically try to mine the blocks that are going to be the most valuable to them, the ones that have the most transaction fees associated with them. Now on the Ethereum network, this transaction fee is called a gas fee. So the idea is that this gas or ether is fueling the Ethereum virtual machine to execute different smart contracts. Because remember, that's kind of the whole backbone of the Ethereum network. Uh, all the massive warehouses full of GPUs and shelves of gaming computers, those are basically just forming a decentralized supercomputer to execute these smart contracts. Um, but EIP-1559, it's going to change the way that these fees are handled. So. Uh, there's going to be a base transaction fee with an optional tip to the miners. Now, it's not really an optional tip to miners. It's kind of like how in America it's, you know, it's optional to tip, but not really if you go to a restaurant, because if you go back there, they probably won't give you good service or they'll spit in your food. Uh, but of course, this is a blockchain network that we're talking about where everything gets recorded. So it's kind of like not tipping in a restaurant, but the entire world is just one big restaurant. If you did that, you would go hungry pretty quickly. Um, but this strategy is going to ultimately uh, make these Ethereum fees be less because right now the way that the transaction fees work It's really making it difficult for the market to scale and it prevents a lot of the use cases And really it kind of creates a barrier for poorer people to start using the currency like um, I'm here on MetaMask. So let's say that I wanted to swap uh, some Ethereum for a different coin, for Rubik, which is a fairly standard Ethereum transaction. It's not super complicated. It's not gonna, you know, there, not a lot of bytes go into this. So currently I have a 0.01 Ethereum, which is priced at $15.32. So I wanna swap it uh, for Rubik. And then it's going to review the swap. So this is, this is actually checking multiple exchanges to see how much it's going to be. So this is uh, a better case scenario than if I just went to you know, Uniswap or just one place to figure how much it's gonna cost. Um, but see, this is the estimated network fee, 37.49. Uh, so it cost more than twice as much. Just the transaction fee is more than twice as much to actually do this transaction. Uh, and that doesn't make any sense, right? Like imagine, you know, first of all, uh, this is $15 in Ethereum that I have. So already uh, getting somebody to buy this much Ethereum is something that they isn't tangible, that they can't hold or touch or sniff uh, is gonna be a little bit difficult. But then telling them, oh yeah, use this as a currency where you know, if you're making a transaction this small, you end up paying twice as much. It's not going to work. You know, I've I've been saying this about uh, different coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum a lot that they're really not appropriate for transactions that are like under a thousand dollars. You know, if you were to buy groceries with this, hundred bucks, and then you're paying thirty two dollars uh, or thirty seven dollars to make that transaction, it's not going to work. So this might be good for the network in the long run, but things are definitely not all sunshine and roses. Oh no, there are a lot of Ethereum miners that are pretty pissed off about this because, you know, last month, 
Ethereum miners earned close to $1 billion. Uh, that's the collective effort of all of the Ethereum miners and mining pools around the world. And over half of that, over half of that money came from transaction fees. So, you know, you could just look at the blockchain and despite these high gas fees, people were still paying for them. People were still willing to deal with Ethereum and the miners were making bank. But now they are expecting mining profits to drop by about 30 to 50 percent. Now, it's important to point out that the miners profits dropping is not the same thing as the price of Ethereum dropping. Uh, ideally, the price of Ethereum can rise about 30 to 50 percent in order to compensate for this. And there's actually a good chance that it will, considering that uh, part of the changes that are coming with EIP-1559 are to increase its scalability. Um, you know, otherwise, if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't become more scalable, if more people don't buy into it and the price of the coin doesn't go up, then you might see a lot of the miners go to mine another coin because it might it might not be worth it for them to mine Ethereum anymore. Uh, and depending on what kind of hardware they have, like as long as they don't have ASICs that are like just meant to mine Ethereum, then they might be able to switch up pretty easily. Like if someone has a warehouse full of uh, GPUs, there's many different coins that you can mine with GPUs. Now, another reason that I think the price of Ethereum is going to go up is because with this new transaction model, the majority of the transaction fees are going to be burnt. Um, so, you know, in this MetaMask example, like if I was going to actually end up paying that $30 for a transaction fee, maybe 25 of those dollars or, um, you know, maybe like 29, like almost all of it is going to just be destroyed in, in Ether, obviously. They're not burning real US dollars, they're burning Ether. Uh, and this actually changes Ethereum's inflation schedule to a deflationary one, which is most likely going to raise the price of Ethereum, you know, basic economics. So, of course, this is going to end up in a fork of the Ethereum network. Uh, but this isn't the first time that this has happened. You know, there's been many changes to Ethereum over the years. Uh, it's actually built in for it to be constantly improved. That was, you know, that was kind of built in from the beginning. Whereas if you look at coins like Bitcoin, it wasn't intended to have a whole bunch of changes to it after its original implementation. Um, so yeah, there's been many changes over the years and the devs, they have what's called a difficulty bomb or ice age that goes in place to prevent hard forks like what happened with Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So basically it's gonna get substantially harder to try and continue mining on that old blockchain that doesn't have this new type of transaction fee implemented. So most miners, especially the small time miners or the people that are not in a mining pool are going to be deterred because they just aren't going to have the resources to actually defuse that difficulty bomb. But that's about it for this Ethereum update. Uh, I'm also going to leave a link in the video's description to the Ethereum uh, core devs live stream, their call that took place this morning. Uh, it's about 90 minutes long, but it goes into a lot more nitty gritty uh, about what this update brings from it. Uh, there's a lot more that you can get from an hour and a half of the Ethereum devs than from me. But I hope that you enjoyed this video anyway. And if you did, consider subscribing and leaving a like. And let me know what your thoughts are about the future of Ethereum in the comments below.